Well, hi. Um, so, um, so if, if you've seen the previous video, um, we we solved this uh, quadratic equation x squared plus two epsilon x minus one equal to zero exactly. Um, and then uh, what we did was we approximated the exact solutions of this equation in the form of a power series representation in powers of the small parameter epsilon. Um, so now we are sort of getting into perturbation theory proper, which is um, let's pretend for a moment that we don't know how to solve this quadratic equation. But we've been able to identify a small parameter in this equation, which we've written as epsilon. Um, and this small parameter is also called a perturbation parameter. And the idea now is uh, to look for a solution of this equation um, in the form of a power series in powers of the perturbation parameter epsilon. Um, so in other words, we're looking for a solution of this equation uh, of the form x, which is a function of epsilon, which we can write as x0 plus x1 epsilon plus x2 epsilon square plus so on, um, or general from n equals 0 to infinity xn epsilon to the power of n. Right. So we'll assume that this particular equation has a solution of the form uh, x0 plus x1 epsilon plus x2 epsilon square, square and so on. Um, when we're assuming that a solution of this form exists with only positive integral integer powers of epsilon. Um, such, uh, we are basically assuming that this is a regular perturbation series uh, to distinguish it from what is called a singular perturbation series, which will also which can also contain uh, negative powers of epsilon. Um, and so, so that will be a topic we'll uh, talk in uh, maybe um, in, in a couple of videos from now. But for now, such a series solution is called a regular perturbation series solution of the equation that we're trying to solve. Uh, so we, we'll try and distinguish these ideas a little more carefully in future. Um, so, so we look for a solution of this equation of this form, pretending that we don't know how to solve this particular equation. So let's see how this works. Uh, now, what does it mean to look for the solution uh, of this form? It means that we have to solve for uh, these coefficients x0, x1, x2, and so on. We have to solve for these. Um, so how do we do that? So let, let's try that process out now. Um, so what we'll do is we'll take this uh, series and plug it into the equation and, uh, and try and simplify and uh, see uh, how, that, how the process works. So let's do that now. Um, so we have x squared, which means let's put this factor in, x0 plus um, x1 epsilon plus x2 epsilon square dot 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 square there's a square plus 2 epsilon x plus 2 epsilon times x0 plus x1 epsilon plus x2 epsilon square dot 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 minus 1 equals 0. Right? So let's uh, square this out and simplify it. Now one of the things is um, although this series has an infinite number of terms, uh, what we'll do is we'll retain just let's say up to the second order terms in epsilon, see how the process works. Uh, and that'll give us a general idea. And the more the number of terms we retain, the better is our approximation. Um, but let's assume for now that just to get the general idea of how this process works, we'll retain a couple of terms and see um, what, what happens. So, uh, so we have to square this term. And this will give us a factor, the square of this, x0 square plus x1 square, epsilon square, plus let's ignore squaring this because if you square this it will give something to the power of 4. Uh, so let's pick out this term now, 2, the cross term 2, x0, x1, epsilon, that's a linear term here and then there's a square term coming from here. So 2, um, x0, x2, epsilon square. Um, all other terms would be higher, higher than uh, order epsilon square. So let's leave them out for now and then you multiply these two out. So that gives us 2 epsilon x0 plus 2 x1 epsilon square. Uh, and this will be, give us an epsilon cube. So let's leave that out, minus 1 equals 0. Um, right? So that's, that's an expansion of the quadratic term plus this and minus 1 equals 0. And now let's connect uh, like powers of epsilon. So 
we have a term x naught square minus 1 which does not have uh, an epsilon uh, any power of epsilon attached to it so so we have a first term x naught square minus 1 plus um, then there is a term linear in epsilon which is this so we have 2 x naught x1 plus 2 x naught epsilon and then we have terms which are second order quadratic terms in epsilon which will give us x1 square um, plus 2 x naught x2 plus 2 x1 epsilon square equals 0. Of course there are many higher order terms we are saying that all those terms included equals 0. So maybe we should just write dot 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 equals 0. Okay. Um, now how do now, now what do we do now? So how do we solve for these constants? Um, so here um, there is a very sort of strong assumption that we'll make, which is we we'll assume that such a series exists and that such a series converges to the solution um, to, to, to the value x. Um, and that this is a unique series representation of the solution where, wherever it converges to x. Now these are not at all obvious and that is where um, uh, the idea that when we are looking for a perturbative solution to an equation, um, we are really not doing exact mathematics in the sense it's not rigorously justified that we can we have a unique power series representation which converges and to the value of x. Um, so, so it's more like an approximate method uh, of mathematics, but it's extremely powerful. And um, um, I must mention here uh, one uh, sort of one of the one really really uh, one of the best books on this subject by uh, Professor Carl Bender and Professor Stephen Orsak. Uh, I'll put a link somewhere. Uh, it's it's definitely um, one of the best books on this on this subject that really explores uh, asymptotic analysis, perturbation theory, differential equations in, in a lot of detail. Um, so so the basic idea here is um, what what we what 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 we're saying is that a unique power series or a perturbation series in this case exists. Um, and what that, if, 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 if such a series exists and is unique, uh, what that means is if the left hand side, which is a series in epsilon equal to 0, for all values of epsilon uh, within the radius of convergence, uh, then the coefficients of epsilon should all independently be equal to 0. So this is simply uh, um, simply sort of carrying over the ideas of a Taylor series representation or a power series representation and we'll, we'll talk more about this in another video if, uh, if you've not done this but um, or, or for a review um, um, so so power series representation is like an expansion in a basis of monomials and if it's a if it's a um, and, and all those monomials are linearly independent from each other and so if if the entire sort of series is equal to zero then all the coefficients must be equal to zero so it's if a unique power series exists so with that assumption what we'll do is um, let's get rid of this for now we'll take all of these terms and equate them to zero now the first term is called order zero which means that order epsilon is zero so it doesn't have any power the power of epsilon appearing in front of it is zero so it's sometimes called the zeroth order solution and if we equate this to zero we find x naught square minus one is zero and this gives us x naught is either plus or minus one right and this makes sense if epsilon is zero we get back our equation x squared equals one equals zero and that's why it's called a zeroth order solution and it agrees with our approximate solutions that we that we've obtained in the previous videos so that's a zeroth order solution the, the first order solution will be we'll obtain by, com, by by comparing this term to zero so let's just write that's the order epsilon to the power of one uh, it will be better to write it like this maybe okay and so this will give us um, 2x naught that's a common factor 1 plus x1 equal to 0 but we already know that x naught is either plus or minus 1 so it's not 0 which means the only solution is x1 is minus 1 so that's our second coefficient the third coefficient is obtained by equating the epsilon square term the coefficient of the epsilon square term to 0 so we already know x naught from this step we know x1 from this step 
and all we have to do is find x2. And by equating this to 0, we find that x2 will be, um, it'll be minus x1 squared minus 2x1 divided by, and again x0 is non-zero, so we can divide by x0 to x0. Um, so x0 is either plus or minus 1, so the denominator is plus or minus 2. x1 uh, is minus 1, so minus 1 square is 1, so it's minus 1 plus 2, which is 1. And so uh, you can, this is just plus or minus 1, which means there are two possibilities. So x2 is plus or minus 1. When x0 is plus 1, x2 is plus half, and when x0 is minus 1, x2 is minus half. That's, that's essentially what uh, we're writing here. Okay, great. So uh, so what, the, what does this entire process tell us now? It tells us that we have two solutions, uh, one with x0 plus 1. So let's write the series representation for the first solution. So when x0 is plus 1, uh, the the overall solution x as a function of epsilon is plus 1. Then the first term x1 is minus 1. So we have a minus epsilon to the power of 1. x1 was, so it's x0 plus x1 epsilon. And then x2 epsilon squared. So x2 is half. And we find that this is half epsilon squared. So that's our first solution. And the second solution is minus 1. x1 is minus 1 for both of them. So it's minus epsilon. And then minus half epsilon squared. Okay. Now, these are exactly the solutions that we got by uh, looking at the exact solutions of this equation and expanding the square root and powers of epsilon, which is great because in this case, we did not assume that the perturbation series in powers of epsilon is actually the Taylor series or power series of the square root of, of the solution of the exact solutions. But that it agrees with that is, is good because this is what will guide us in, in future when we are solving more complicated problems. Um, this is basically how sort of the whole idea behind looking for a power series solution developed. That uh, let's assume that such a series solution exists, then solve for the coefficients. Now, in this case, uh, since we know that uh, a Taylor series solution or the power series solution for the exact roots do exist, uh, they, they must agree with the power series solution that we, that, that, we, uh, that we are guessing and trying to solve for. But in cases where we do not know the exact power series uh, or exact solution and therefore their power series representation, this is a very, very big step because what this tells us is that, okay, let's make an assumption. Let's assume that a power series solution exists. We put it back, solve for it. And we have something. We have a solution. That those solutions are not necessarily uh, a Taylor series solution is why this is called a perturbation series solution. Um, so, um, so, so, so this is really uh, our sort of first problem in perturbation series that we have solved. And these are basically uh, our perturbative series solutions to this equation. And now we'll sort of work more on this general idea and try and solve more complicated equations and see how this comes about. Of course, we can make better approximations by retaining more and more terms, but as you can see, the algebra sort of, we have to solve uh, multiple set of equations. Um, um, and uh, essentially what we've done is we've taken this equation and broken it down into a series of s s uh, equations that we can solve exactly and then build up our solution systematically uh, from there on. So. So let's work more on this idea uh, in the next video.